All right. Once again, Chris Noosh, and I'm the, here this week with a Noosh Extras. I'm going to talk about, uh, I guess, where I've come from and where I've been as an artist and how I got to where I am today, um, how I started, all that fun stuff, all the stuff that um, people like to hear. And I don't really, I'm just going to tell my story, I guess, as an artist. Just like most people who are interested in drawing and painting and stuff, I took art in middle school, took art in high school. I got interested in it there. I took a lot of art in high school. I took ceramics, uh, uh, 2D design, watercolor, painting, uh, you know, all the fun stuff that you would typically take in high school. So that's where I got interested. When I was 16 years old, I started working and doing caricatures at SeaWorld in Orlando. I was working as a professional artist, right? I drew myself through college. I drew I still draw caricatures to this day. I just realized yesterday that I've been doing them for 18 years, which is longer than half of my life, which is kind of crazy. And so I've worked at SeaWorld, Six Flags Over Georgia, the Georgia Aquarium. I've worked at like private events and birthday parties and stuff like that. I don't do retail caricatures anymore. I only do party and event caricatures at the moment. Retail's not really my favorite. It really takes a toll on your soul. Uh, I got a lot of a lot of crazy stories from retail caricatures that uh, I, I don't I don't like to get into because they're not really they're not they're not super fun. Um, but so when I graduated high school, I wanted to be an animator. That's what I, this was my senior project in high school was making a little animation. And I did it on like a VHS tape with like stop motion where I would just like click the button on the back of the VHS player. And then it, I did, I really did it on VHS. And then I did like a flip book style thing on VHS. And I wish I could find that VHS tape, but I, I have no idea where that would be right now it would be kind of fun to watch right there's no way i'm going to be able to find it and put it on this video it's not happening but when i graduated high school all the schools with the animation programs in my area seemed to be a little uh part of the pun sketchy um so i took the economical route and i went to a local four-year school kennesaw state university um while i was there i took a bunch of different classes to get a feel for what i liked and what i was doing i went in aiming for a degree in drawing and painting which i did get which i do have i have a degree in drawing and painting also, I tried to do a bunch of other different mediums while I was there, like ceramic, sculpture, drawing, oil painting, watercolors, darkroom photography. But in the end, I ultimately fell in love with printmaking. Uh, while I was in printmaking, pr relief prints were the first project that we did. And that's really all it took. Uh, while I was there, I tried my hand at a bunch of different print mediums, but relief printing really stood out to me. I also really enjoyed watercolor because it was uh, it kind of lived in the middle of drawing and painting for me. Kind of in the same way that printmaking lives between printmaking and sculpture. I guess I like those like in between mediums that uh, that don't really aren't as solidly defined as as one person may like. All right, so let's get into the meat of this video and talk about how I developed my style. The one thing that I want to talk about here is uh, the difference between style and voice. The one thing I, I do get asked a lot, like, how do you develop your style? You know, I like your style. And to me, style is kind of a dirty word. I don't really like the word style because, and here's why. When a person is trying to develop their style, they are taking inspiration from other sources. They're looking at other artists and they're kind of copying and and I don't know that that's the best way to develop your own unique personal style. I would encourage people to find their voice. Finding your style is easy because you are kind of taking someone else's style. Um, but but developing your voice is really difficult. Developing your voice takes years and years of failure. Uh, to find something that you really like that really works with how your brain works. Um, for me, it was printmaking and relief printmaking. My brain works uh, in very, it likes weird shapes. It likes straight lines. It likes curved lines. Um, it doesn't really like subtlety. My brain uh, goes 
works in in terms of gradients it goes from dark to light to dark to light it doesn't really go into like subtle tonal shades um so like realistic drawing was never really my um my forte even though when i was doing like caricatures and stuff i would really try to do some like realistic drawings and i'll show you a couple of these and these were done uh right after i was out of high school <sighs> so um you know i really like this stuff but it wasn't it didn't come naturally to me it wasn't easy and I, I like doing it in the moment, but I eventually fell out of love with work like this. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is the difference between style and voice is voice is something that comes naturally to you. It's how you speak. Um, it's, it, uh, it's not someone else's voice. It's not using someone else's tone. It's something that's unique to you. And it's something that if, here's the one thing that uh, I have to impose upon you that if, if you are trying to copy someone, uh, their style and their, their style of artwork and make that your own, you're never going to be as good as the person that you're looking up to ever. But if you try to develop your own, your own voice, you are going, there's no one in the world that can do what you can do as good as you can do it in your personal voice. Hopefully that makes sense. It's kind of theoretical, um, but I really do believe that. And if you're really, you're, you're looking to improve yourself in the world, I encourage you in, in the art world, I encourage you to draw from life. I encourage you to uh, draw from life the most important, most important thing. Keep a sketchbook with you wherever you go. Um, and just kind of see how you see the world. If you're an artist, if you're a photographer or whatever, what a sculptor or whatever you do, uh, just, you know, try to figure out how you see the world and figure out how you can translate your vision of the world into your artwork. And that's all I'll say on style and voice. I don't know if there's a real clean way to slide out of that. Um, so let me get back into what I love about printmaking. So obviously with printmaking, I love making prints. But when I first started, I was pulling all those prints and that opened my eyes to a problem with printmaking. What do I do with all these prints? I love the, pro the, I love the carving process. And I saw an artist named Stephen Graham. He was a teacher from Tennessee and he carved stuff and he didn't always print it. He painted the blocks kind of like what I do now, exactly like what I do now. I found him on Instagram first, and then I met him at a festival in Atlanta one day. And after talking to him for a bit, he invited me to carve and paint a block. And so I did. Um, I think at that point I had done maybe one block previously with uh, very little success. It was of two giraffes. Um, it, this one is just carved out of like a piece of pine that I found at Home Depot. And it wasn't, um, wasn't super successful. I think it also carved out a skate deck or two with varying degrees of success. These look pretty good. These were like my early skate decks. Um, I don't know where these are right now. Be kind of cool to see these all again. Um, but you know, we all have to start somewhere. Spin. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a fidgeter. All right, so um, I kept carving and I kept painting the blocks. And sometimes I'd also make prints but I would never, never, never print the blocks that I was going to paint. Intention is very important to me. Um, and the reason for that is because when you print something, it prints backwards from the way that the block is presented. And if I'm drawing something, I want it to be shown and presented in the way that I drew it initially. I don't want it to be the image flipped, even though if there's like not words, you probably would never be able to tell but intention's important to me. I don't, if to me, it's going to look backwards. I don't want it to be backwards to other people. So if I'm painting a block, I never print it. And if I'm printing the block, I never paint it. It's kind of a personal rule that I have. So that's one, that's one of my rules. One of my rules. Um, <sighs> all right. So back in 2013, this is like an inspiration story back in 2013, my brother got married in Mexico and I saw a lot of artwork and I realized that all of the artwork featured animals that lived in the area. At the time I was doing a lot of giraffes and elephants work in my work. Um, 
And these animals do not live in Georgia. So I decided to make this piece featuring two of the family cats that we had, uh, Bud and Little Girl, those are their names, with a Mayan influence. And this got me thinking of different combinations of printmaking and carving techniques that I could kind of marry together. Um, I've done this several times. It's always very, very involved. It takes a while for me to kind of like do this sort of technique, but it's also fun. I'll show a couple of those on the screen right now. Um, I also tried uh, some like collage techniques, which were pretty cool. I haven't really done these in a while, but they were fun at the time. Just kind of another part of my development is like working with color and working things together and stuff. And it's something I just, I think had to get out of my system. They were cool. I like doing them. Um, and I wish I could do more stuff like this now, but my brain won't let me do this. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, I don't know. What do you think of them? So what I really have focused on in the past couple years was carved and painted blocks. I have done hundreds of them, maybe even thousands with my little mini blocks because I've done I've done hundreds of those mini blocks. I, it, it's possible I've gotten close to a thousand carved and painted blocks over the past eight, nine years. And after you do hundreds of something, you kind of get good at it, or at least at least I hope so. <laughs> at least I'm like wasting what I'm doing. Um, and that's where I, I'm kind of am today. I carve blocks, I paint them, I ink them. And sometimes, you know, I make prints out of those blocks. I print on t-shirts. You've seen all those. Yeah. So that's kind of what I do. Um, I guess now I'm going to, uh, just kind of pull a couple of my favorite pieces that I've done over the years. And I'm going to show those to you. I'm going to say a couple words, um, on each one, like what I like about them maybe. And just, you know, just a couple couple pieces of, of information, the insp inspiration perhaps for each one. Uh, so I'm just going to go through that pool, pull a handful of things until uh, I think this video is a little bit too long. So these first couple images are from my first show that I had after I graduated college. And I was kind of playing with repetition and printmaking and what I could do with one block carved and adding an additional element to it. And it had different little animals that could fit in different planes and even some other vehicles for movement. Um, and then also some like cats and just weird animals and stuff. So I thought this was a fun little show. This sleepy panda piece was uh, one of the first carved and painted blocks I think I ever did. I'm not sure if it was the first one. Well, I know it wasn't the first one that I did because I showed you that one earlier, but it's one of the first ones that I did that are similar to the way that I'm working today. Um, and it was a fairly large piece. At the beginning, I was working very large. I kind of like to uh, make little fun, little texture areas out of in small areas of a larger piece was kind of the focus of what I was doing. My work has gotten a lot smaller since then just because of space. At the beginning, I was quite ambitious. This piece is called The Banjoist, and it was one of my first, well, it's not one of my first prints, but it was one of the first prints that I kind of really put a lot of effort into. I kind of wanted to do um, a lot of color mixing. I think it's got like seven different prints through the press on it and maybe five different blocks something along those lines got a lot of different colors i was mixing with uh, playing with the different colors and mixing together and trying to create a finished image using relief block techniques i think it was pretty successful i would do some things differently today obviously i've grown since then but uh for a piece back then i still kind of like it it's one of my favorite prints that i've worked on so far i should do more larger prints like this instead of the smaller ones. Maybe I will soon. Next year. 2022 is my year for uh, printing on paper again. Maybe. Don't hold me to that. An idea that I want to work with a little bit more is the idea of uh, creating two different elements working and fighting together in the same scene. Because uh, I think that kind of tells more for the storytelling aspect of my work when I have two pieces or two creatures or two anything working together to do something. It kind of allows uh, the viewer's mind to uh, narrate something, tell a story of how they got to this scene rather than... Um, you know, one element really doesn't give you that storytelling. It kind of just gives you a character to look at. I want to do more storytelling stuff. Put that on my list of things to do in 2022 as well. 
Throughout the year, I've also played with the idea of movement in my work. This is an example of one of those pieces. When you pull the little ball at the bottom of the hippo, its wings would flap. I've done this in a couple other pieces too, not this specific movement, but movement in general. Um, but it's something that I've played with throughout the years and I enjoy. It is just very complicated to get these pieces to work in the way that I would like them to work. This is another theme that I've worked within over the past years. Uh, I like to work within various themes of my work. This is my Vroom series where I do different animals riding on different rockets. And the basic rule of this one is the bigger the rocket, the bigger the number, the more boosters that it gets. I've done Vrooms, and that's your standard Vrooms. Those are all small pieces. I've got the Vroom 2000s, which are, you know, about 16 inches or so. And then I've got the Vroom 3000s, which are much, much larger pieces. So these are always really fun to work on. And these are animals that you typically wouldn't find hanging out in the air. It's always kind of fun to work with the, the physics that would be involved with an animal like this flying and the expressions. Going back on that storytelling theme that I was talking about a, a couple pieces before, this is one uh, on the skate decks in tall formats. I like to tell a story from top to bottom. And what I mean by that is like I'm not I'm not trying to do a specific story. I like to add little elements in there that are kind of interacting with each other that uh, the viewer can kind of make up a story on their own and just just little bits of interest throughout the piece. Uh, this piece was called The Dip, and it was made for uh, a gallery show at ABV Gallery. It's focused on uh, skate deck art. This is a carved and painted skate deck. And last but not least, this is kind of where I am today, uh, creating full scenes and framed carved and painted pieces that also kind of tell a story. The ones that I've done so far are just one element in a landscape of a world minus the ocean scene that I did as called S cargo. Um, but yeah, these are just kind of full scenes. It's kind of where my mind is today of just doing little vignettes of creatures and animals and f just in funny and awkward, weird situations. And that's where my work is today. It's always fun to look back on my past works to, uh, Think of all the themes that I've themes and works and what I've done in the past and kind of use that moving forward. Every now and then I like to uh, take a take a trip down memory lane and really revisit some of the work that I've done in the past. And I think it can add to the work that I'm doing today. And it's important for me to do that from time to time. So that's my art career in a nutshell. And hopefully I look back on my work that I'm making today and see it for the, you know, the happy and necessary pieces that it is and how fun it is and how important it is to be making it today. But also that I can see the growth that I have taken between now and in the future when I'm looking at in the future. So, ah, all right. Well, this has been another new extras. Hopefully you enjoyed this little um you know, look back into the past of my work. I'm sitting here. It is uh, very late at night. It is 1.43 on Saturday night, Sunday morning. And I'm filming this video for you guys. So hopefully you enjoyed. Um, and I will, I'm getting, getting done printing all my t-shirts. Printed over 150 t-shirts this week. I've got one more thing to tackle. And then maybe just maybe I can start um, doing something a little bit different for you guys as we get into the holiday season here. And then beyond in January, I hope to be back to making my new weekly vlogs. So thanks guys for watching. I'll see y'all later. Thanks. Bye.